Okay, recording started. So we didn't really have much for today. Um, no demos. Uh, the one thing I guess we wanted to talk about is anything related to the workloads API. And we could have any open discussion. We don't even have any announcements. It's a short, short meeting, I guess, unless we have a lot to talk about uh, for workloads API. So the one thing on the agenda is from Tomas and Majek, and that's cron jobs to GA. And we wanted to kind of talk about, well, from previous meetings, what do we want to do here? Like, what's the plan to get them to GA? Yeah, okay. we started last time, and I, I, will, I told you I will bring Mache, because he knows all the issues about it. So here he is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I'm not sure if I, I mentioned that earlier. I, I, I hope I did. But basically, the biggest issue about the cron jobs is not the API objects. I'm very happy with the, uh, with the cron jobs API itself. Um, Shared informers? And I, yeah, so I, I'm, not, I'm not very particularly uh, um, 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 interested in changing it other than actually extending it, but that's fine even in GA. Uh, although if I remember correctly, as one of the items to GA with Eric back in the days when we were writing cron jobs initially as scheduler jobs back then, we also wanted to see uh, the ISO standard for specifying um, uh, run times for cron jobs. Uh, but that would be a nice half thing. Um, I think, but didn't we decide explicitly not to do that? I don't recall any discussions around that. Okay, there was a big thing a while ago where somebody wanted to have ISO standards for specifying cron jobs, but it required us to ship an IANA database along with Kubernetes for uh, time zone. Or no, maybe that was just time zone and it, that and it was didn't have anything. Yes, that was just time okay. zones, and the problem was around only time zones and supporting time zones in cron jobs. It has nothing to do with the um, uh, with the ISO format for specifying okay. cron. If I remember correctly, there were even uh, the original idea was to include both uh, uh, Google App Engine uh, format for specifying run times schedule times, and the ISO format. Um, but none of the two actually uh, were implemented ever. So uh, it would be nice to have, but it's not something that, that will block us. And additionally, we can always do that uh, post GA because uh, that is not breaking uh, the backwards compatible. Backward compatible, yeah. yeah. So that's not a problem. So from a, an API point of view, uh, we're in a good, pretty good uh, uh, form. Unfortunately, uh, the biggest offender is what we don't see from a user point of view, which is the controller itself. If I'm not mistaken, all of the controllers, except for the cron jobs, are using shared informers for uh, interacting with the API, which basically means they react to changes instead of relisting mm -hmm. all of the uh, resources in, in the API, which um, as some might uh, get the idea, will require uh, much more resources to process data and will be uh, increasing significantly, increasing memory usage over time when you grow the number of jobs and cron jobs and pods that they are being managed. Unfortunately, uh, the majority of other controllers are reasonably simple to rewrite to share it informers because the majority of them are working in react type of a fashion, which means they just react to whatever the change is going on and they just need to apply the change to, uh, to the working, to the workload. With cron jobs, unfortunately, it's a little bit more complicated 
because what we need to do is not just listen to the changes that are coming from jobs, cron jobs, but we need to also maintain an internal queue of upcoming job executions that we need to then at a proper time, uh, point in time uh, kick off. Um, and that, and, 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 and on top of that, that queue can be dynamically changed at any point in time when somebody decides to modify their schedule for their cron job. So at basically any point in time when a cron job is, be, is edited, you need to uh, rebuild the queue or basically modify uh, the items in the queue. And that part about rewriting the cron job controller is the biggest offender, is the biggest problem, and the reason that I will, I will be literally blocking every um, uh, promotion cron of cron jobs to GA, because I know that at some point in time, people will start banging at our doors that we gave them a product that has these flaws with this amount of uh, cron jobs. Uh, I've been talking with several people. They've been trying with a couple thousand cron jobs and it was working just fine, but nobody actually tried with bigger numbers than that from what I've heard. So we, and, and the only problem is that we just need to find somebody um, that will um, find a appropriate amount of time to actually write it and then an additional person has to be uh, find pretty much the same amount of time to, re, uh, to re, uh, review that PR because that won't be an easy spot. It literally, it will re literally require to rewrite 70 or 80% of the controller currently that we have. Uh, there is an open PR for switching cron job to control uh, to shared informers. But the problem with the current PR is that it only deals with the simplest part of the switch, which is switching on to shared informers, but it's not addressing the problem of actually scheduling the jobs into, uh, into some sort of queue or whatever other mechanism will be uh, desired and properly handles the scheduling part of, of jobs. Are there any questions or suggestions around this topic? No, I don't see the link for the open PR for this. Uh, let me try to find it. If you can add it in a minute. So to summarize, what you're saying is we have an open PR out there that would actually add the shared informers, but it doesn't actually build a queue um, yeah. that implements. Well, so it, it doesn't implement deadline, implement deadline scheduling correctly using shared, shared informers. So yeah. I guess the thing we need to decide is when we want to do this work and how we want to do this work. So like, for instance, we could, it is beta, we could do a, like a hard cutover and just go with shared informers in a completely new implementation. Um, but that's kind of high risk. So for the first release, we want to do something like have a flag that turns the new code on and off. Yeah, that makes sense. And release it as an alpha. After that, we could test it pretty thoroughly and then pump it up to a beta um, and then just basically have the defaulting enabled and you have a switch which would allow you to turn it off if you wanted to. So basically turn it on by default. And then after soaking it in beta for, I'd say at least a, at least a release, if not two, then we could consider promoting it to GA. So for a timeline, we probably, go ahead. Yeah, that sounds that sounds basically uh, that sounds reasonable. So, I, but I guess the question: Do do we have people who are interested to contribute and who have cycles to do the work? Is the question? 
That is something that is probably a bigger issue. I mean, I guess if it's a, we can I, we can find contributors. I guess my concern is it's this is kind of a tricky one, right? So it's not like we can just like put a help wanted out for it and. Well, I mean, we could, but if you put a help wanted out for this one and it's not somebody who's already fairly familiar with the code base, I feel like it, getting them to struggle through it might be harder than having somebody who's more familiar. It would be a good mentoring experience for someone who's looking to come up on it, though. Um, so I'm trying to find the time, but from my initial estimate, it is about two weeks up to a month to actually write this properly. And uh, that sounds about reasonable. That's about what I would, be, would have been guessing, yeah. maybe actually a little bit more. Yeah, so, and, and, and honestly, currently with the, uh, with the load that we have, I won't be able to figure out the times yeah. in the near future, at least. Uh, it might change in the upcoming months, but uh, not not that I know it off offhand. All right, let's let me. Well, so we can go back and figure and see if we can get somebody to own it. And could you? Do you think you could have the cycles to at least provide review? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I mean, that would be the. I think we can if we can find somebody to go own it. And then we can commit to providing review and approval. And if not me, then we can get Janet or somebody else to do that too. So, I mean, like, I think we can find the cycles to do it. We're just going to need to go find a contributor. So, if anybody on the call is interested to start contributing to workloads, this is not going to be an easy one, but. <laughs> it's going to be like super hard one, actually. Yeah. yeah. Like you, you will be basically writing a new controller, and the yeah, it will be, it will be you know, everything about chat informers, the consistency, and all the stuff that goes around it. So, <laughs> and on top of that, that will be completely different from all the controllers that we already have. So you can't sneak peek at an ex at any existing controller. I have. I mean, a you can look at all of them. You can yeah. look at all of them to figure out how shared informers work and how not yes. to break the cache. Yes. But I mean, all the controllers are slightly different in how like deployment does not like deployment and replica set both use expectations. I think daemon set uses expectations too. It also has a global cache of nodes that it keeps. Unfortunately, all the controllers are slightly different, which is either really good because like we only address problems that were drastically different and only introduce new code where absolutely necessary, or conversely, we maybe have some commonality in these things that we could factor out in the common libraries. I'm not sure that's actually true. Every time I go through and look at them, I'm like, ah, we could, but no, that wouldn't really work. So, so one of the commonalities that I, that I see in the existing controllers is that they react and implement the change immediately to a running uh, object. Because both uh, replica sets, deployments, deployment sets, they they pick a change and they apply the change almost instantly to the running pod. Whereas for cron job, that's not the case because you are applying changes to the upcoming runs of the cron job, which basically requires and the queue, the separate queue for scheduling your uh, your job executions is something that is uh, that is not present in any of the other uh, controllers. I wrote something like that in OpenShift controllers, sure. but in OpenShift, it was actually pretty simple because we had at least that particular controller had a constant um, constant interval. So it was re-kicking every, I don't know, couple of minutes. And, and that's it. So that was like the simplified version of what the cron job controller has to do. Yeah, so I... Uh, do we have a, a basic write-up of what somebody needs to build? Basically, a, a quick spec of what they need to do? 
Um, Cause that would make it easier for somebody at least to understand the problem because we've talked through a number of technical details here of how this is different from others and what's going on and where it gets complicated. Is this written down anywhere? No, because it's not in the crime job design document for sure because crime job original or uses polling. So yeah. this would be, I mean, it might be something that's worthy of a design issue for sure. Yeah, it's definitely a good starting point for somebody to update the current implement, uh, the current docs that we have around cron jobs and uh, most probably propose a cap that's, like you said, it will be a uh, several release uh, type of a work. So it, it definitely deserves a, a cap and especially that it's different than anything else it by uh, putting it in written will be will be handy yeah I, I think we should cap as well because last time Janet was writing uh, was it, was it right she was writing the TTL garbage collector and they were like pre reviewers and they, they were kind of <laughs> everybody was thinking something else how the queue should be implemented and we ended up switching the code at least two times, as I remember. So deciding those things in advance, I think it will save time for everyone. Yeah, definitely. I'll be present at KubeCon in, in Seattle, and I'll be ha happy to devote uh, some time to the person that will be interested in writing the controllers so we can do the brain dump of the stuff that I have currently in my head. Um, so that, that might be a, a reasonable starting point for, uh, for this work. Yeah, I will be there as well. I guess Ken and Janet and the others. We, we could do yeah. some sneak up design sessions or something like that to plan for the next year and do some designs if you like it. Sounds good. That would be great. Okay. So I want to move on to another topic for workloads. So there's this and it's in the, the thing, there's this interesting problem we have with daemon set because of controller history when you change, when you add new defaults to a pod template spec. And on one side, we kind of, so in, in theory, adding a, a new field with new defaults has always been considered a backward incompatible change. However, from a SIG architecture perspective, it seems like Basically, the outcome is we're going to need to continue to do this, and this is going to be a thing that happens. Now, I talked with Daniel and a couple of the other guys from API Machinery. This was a long time ago. And they said they didn't expect new defaults for template specs. And that, that doesn't really make sense because in the context of using a template spec, you're really capturing the user's intention. Um, like, it, for instance, for this default, it's on pod template spec, which means for all of the workload controllers, um, when I create a new staple set of deployment, the user puts in something, and then the server tells them back, no, that isn't actually what you asked for. You asked for this. Um, I don't know. Tim seemed to kind of think that that's not really what you would want to do anyway, and that we should move these things, like if we're adding new default values, it's okay to add new fields, but they should just be, remain empty for the template spec and then be materialized as defaults on the underlying object. For instance, like you wouldn't add, you don't add them to the pod template spec, add them to pod directly. You don't add them to uh, volume cleans template and staple set, add them directly to the persistent volume claim if they're going to default. Uh, moreover, add them instead of the persistent volume claim. If it's a default, that's really something that's specified on the volume, defaulted on the volume. Um, so try to default on things that actually represent realish things like compute and storage. 
I, I kind of like that idea, and I just wanted to see from a SIGAS perspective and from other workloads maintainers what you guys thought about it. Like, do we think it's more reasonable? So do we think we want to ha add new defaults into pop, like template specs? The one benefit there is defaulting prevents us from prevents us from having to do nil pointer checks inside of our code, right? Like if I default it at the, the uppermost level, um, I never have to check to see if a value is nil inside the code. But there's still some places where you have to do that anyway. On the downside, like it kind of changes what the user is specifying as their declared intent. So I think this goes back to mutating admission controllers, which was kind of similar case. And I, I think we should only default the actual pod, not the pod, pod template in the daemon set or whatever workload it is. And so if, if you recall, there were some issues with node selector. Or at yeah. We had those in OpenShift even before. And the, uh, yeah, the Pod node selector, the defaulting actually happens only for pods and not for the pod spec. So you think you are creating a different pod that then it will actually be because the admission will modify it and if you comparing the pod spec, it will never match, right? But this is this is the issue we already have. So if we default only to pod, we we don't introduce any new incompatibilities, I guess. And also Logically, the user intent, as you said, is I have specified this and I want this created. And also, if you, if you wanted to default actually a daemon set, you would have to do a storage migration or something. So it actually modifies and then your kubectl apply stops working because whatever you had in your file and you do git apply, it will be different and it can trigger rollouts and stuff. So I'm all in for defaulting only the end object. Okay, sounds good. Um, all right, so people do feel, I feel kind of strongly about this. If other people do, chime in on the issue that's listed down there. And um, I think the right thing to do here is prior to 113, getting them to revert this default thing and move it into pod spec, or move it into the pod object and get it out of the controllers. It's already PR for it. Okay, it's already open. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, one thing I forgot to add, Ken, is <laughs> we don't have uh, the case of mutating admissions sorted out. That's something. No, no, we don't. We can and actually. That would be. If we're ready to discuss that topic again. We can do that. Janet has a wonderful document about this. Yeah, we've considered this. We have. Have you seen that one yet? I think I read it at some point. Okay. I, I can so I find it, I can link. Exact stuff, but yeah. So I, I put that on the list of problems that we don't actually know how to solve yet. Um, I don't think, so staple set and daemon set shouldn't be sensitive to it because of the way they label pods. And like they don't expect things not to change. Um, there's still ways you could actually break them, and there's still probably things we could do to make staple set and daemon set more robust. But deployment can get victimized really easily with mutating uh, webhooks as applied to replica sets. So the only answer we have right now is just don't do that. Um, we've had ideas about making them more robust, but every time we walk down this path, like we thought through like five or six different things and came up with a reason each time why we shouldn't or couldn't do it. Um, but I don't know how broadly that information has been shared outside of a few people in uh, workloads and a few people in API machinery. So maybe putting that out more broadly and restarting the conversation is something we should do. Yeah, last I recall, we were talking about it on Je with Janet on issue with Demon set, I think. And we were well, kind yeah. of, it, it went we, we, down that we need uh, server side apply to actually or dry run, which is actually part of that effort, and that is dry run. One for dry run was one was one way to do it, but we don't even. I don't. I think at this point we're not even sure that's sufficient. Okay, I, I was thinking it is, but the issue was how 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 not to actually call dry run on everything. 
it's as far as I because you would be hitting API very frequently. Yeah, you would kind of also be beating up the API server every time there is mutation. For staple set, that might not even be that bad. For daemon set, to be honest, it might not even be that horrible. But for deployment, that could be a big problem. Yeah, this definitely needs some design for. I think even before design, I think maybe we need to decide on a general direction that we think might be workable. Well, I guess that's part of design. Yeah, I consider it part of the design. That, that's what I meant. Yeah. We need to decide what's the right way, and then if we can even do it. But th th this seems to be the issue more frequently with how the time goes. Sounds good. Okay, I think that was all I had for workloads. Does anyone else have anything for workloads? I didn't have many cycles this time, so I will pass. But, yeah. Okay, then I'm going to move to open discussions. So does anyone have anything they'd like to talk about related to workloads, not workloads, or anything else? Okay, do people want 25 minutes back? I mean. No. Okay, guys, then we're going to end early today, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Ken. Thanks. Have a great.